tall. I would like you just to start with a little bit of a jog. Ah, oh, good. And add a little shoulder shrug. Good. Then just feeling like you are alive and a well and you're present. Sometimes there are so many distractions in our lives that we get crazy drama drawn out of ourselves and we don't want that today. Right now we want to be right here. So using this movement to become more present. Good. Now I'm going to grab my tiny little weights. And for this little beginning set, I'm going to use them, like I said, to stretch more. Not necessarily, I'm not using 20 pounders, these are two, two pounders. I'm going to jog just for a minute, it feels kind of good. And I'm going to let my, my uh, shoulders be very free. So if I were jogging on the street like this, you might kind of laugh at me, but I'm not. I'm actually doing it in the living room. Nobody's here, so it doesn't matter. <sighs> And maybe some days I do jog down the street like that. Who knows? <laughs> ah, good. So feeling free, feeling free. Good. Ah, let your neck be free. Arms be free. Let your heart be free. Let your butt be free. Oh, that's a weird one. Let your feet be free. Ah, okay, good. Now, you're gonna take a wide stance and I want you just to kick your butt, kick your butt and do a little bicep curl. It's just kind of easy. And you might pretend that you're ice skating in St. Petersburg on an ice rink. Good work, ah, good, and as we're warming up, I have way too many people to thank, but quite a few people. Notes and class donations, Amy, Suzanne, Debbie, Donna, Deb, Wendy, more of you I know, but thank you for supporting the class and each other, so cool. Ah, good work. So glad, I'm so sad I missed our class on Tuesday, but I had to uh, take my spouse to the airport. So I know a, sh a few of you showed up online. So I think I have everyone's email now, but that's the first time I've ever had to cancel. So I don't think it will happen again. <sighs> Sometimes it can't be avoided. <laughs> so I'm just going ahead and skating. We're gonna do this for about 30 more seconds and I'm kicking my butt, kicking my butt, ta-ta. Ta-ta, ta-ta, a little skating, a little ice skating. This morning, October 21st. Good, tomorrow is my son's 32nd birthday. Woo-hoo, anyone else have a birthday tomorrow? You're, if you so, you're a Libra. Very Libra-esque. Okay, good. Then from here, comfortable stance. Take your arms up, pull down. And we're going to start a little bit of a circular movement. One arm, the other arm. One arm, the other arm. And this is for upper body. I want you to use your scapula, your ribs, your circling. The visual here that you could be stirring a pot of soup and then another pot of soup. Stirring, stirring, really circling around. Notice how that's loosening up your back a bit. Good, and then I'm gonna make it a little bit more like I'm drawing a figure eight on a chalkboard. When's the last time you had to draw on a chalkboard? Yesterday? Oh, for me, many, many years. <laughs> Good work. Ah. Perfect, keep going. And it's, ooh, ah, feels great. Good, and then I change. I'm circling up and over my head. For a few of you, this might need to be modified because it doesn't feel great to take your shoulder up over your head, but for some of you, it feels great. Like a small little helicopter circling over your head. Circle, and circle, and circle, and circle. Good. And we're gonna do the next one here, both hands together, and you're circling 
one giant pot full of soup. You're at second harvest. You're working all morning. You're making black bean stew. But it's a big, big pot. And you're stirring. Good, now stir the other way. Stir the other way. Good, really reach out and stir. This is a giant pot. You've got a heavy iron spoon and you're stirring. Good, and then you've got two pots, two circles. Circle and circle. Good, can you, if you're using the small weights, can you feel how that helps you stretch and open up? If it's not helpful, ditch those weights. For me, it feels really good. Good, and then here I'm just sort of gesturing, but it's circular movement. My palm is facing up, kind of like I'm doing a greeting for my ice skating team. Hello, ice skaters. Good, and then again, more of the drawing a circle in front of you. Big circle, where you can think you're tracing a giant rainbow. Good. You can also think about going a little bit back, elbow reaching back. Good. Sometimes I also like to think I'm wiping the sweat off my brow. And these movements, they're all slightly different, but they're really like juicy. Good. Yay. Ah, nice. And then finally, over the head, helicopter circles. Good, with or without weights. Just see if you can move your body in this way. I'm doing natural shifting of weight side to side. That feels just good. Keeping everything flowing. Perfect, okay. Now from here, I'm gonna look at my feet. My feet are about hip width apart or a little bit wider. And I'm just gonna bring the outer edges so that they're in neutral. I'm gonna use the weights here as I take a breath in. I'm gonna do one good roll down. So I start with my head nod and I roll the spine down and I think about myself as a stegosaurus. So as I come down, my spine is lifting up and growing into the tufted spines of the stegosaurus. When I come all the way down, I might choose to bend my knees. Oh, that feels great to me. And really drop my head. <clears throat> I could nod my head yes. I do want to take a full breath in this position, filling out the sides of my lungs. And then on another exhale, I start with the arches of my feet, and then the bones lift me up. When I come all the way up, I stand tall for a moment, and I ground myself with long arms, and the small little weights at the end of the arms help me lift my sternum. So this, the, the standing position here really kind of makes me feel like I'm standing perfectly, perfect form. Good. Then I'm gonna ditch the weights and grab my TheraBand. I wanna move into side bending and just a couple of arm strengthening sets with the TheraBand today. So a little bit more of standing. I'm gonna have my TheraBand up and I'm gonna take a minute to make sure that it's the right length for me. How do I know? Well, my arms are in a high V. So if I were a cheerleader and I was going V for victory, that would be the form. V for victory. My arms aren't really super wide. They're not really narrow. It's a V shape. And once you find it, you can allow the top of your arm bones to sink. You have a nice long neck. It feels great. Good. From here, reach up and then side bend. Good, exhale, center. Inhale, side bend. I'm today gonna see if I can do this one with nose breathing only. So inhale through the nose as you stretch. Exhale, back to center. Good, you can take your own timing. Mine are pretty slow. Great. Inhaling, exhaling. 
lift up, and then over. Good, now your eyes should be straight ahead on the horizon. And then, yeah, you're looking a little bit sideways, but your head's never looking down. Just another way to say that you are not tilting, you're not rotating. This is a true side bend. So if you were sandwich material, you would be the piece of lettuce inside of two pieces of bread. A lettuce sandwich, Jen, man, that's pretty poor. Yeah, that's all we have today. <laughs> Inhale, exhale. Good, one more each way. Beautiful side bending. And one more. Perfect. Let the arms slowly come down. Take the TheraBand here, wrap it around the top of your thighs or hips and let your arms come behind you. Good, my feet are now in a parallel foot position, and I'm gonna just practice with a plie. Plie is bend your knees and straighten. Good, now as I bend my knees, I'm gonna see if I can pull the arms back. Bend the elbows and then pull back. Now I'm not straining anything here, I'm stretching a little tiny bit and strengthening a little tiny bit through the triceps, back of my arms. Bend and straighten. If you can't get that quite, the therapy might need to be a little bit lower for your arms to feel something. Bend, straighten, find it, and then let's see if we can do 10. Keep your neck long. Nine. Good. Now, if you're really focused, you can definitely feel, oh yeah, this is a strengthener and stretch for those triceps. It's not a lot of movement. Bend. Straighten, bend, straighten. Good, let's do five more, and four, and three, and two, last one. Woo-hoo, perfect. TheraBand comes up. I wrap it around the back of my body. I try to keep it long. And then, as I wrap it around, it comes on my ribs. It's not on my waist. I make it very tight. I feel that my shoulders are down my back, and my feet are going to be in a V shape. And then on this one, I just want to practice the footwork first. We did a plie on that last one. This one's a releve, so we lift up. Good. Now, the heels don't have to stay together but I want you to activate the inside of your legs. And today, can you make a connection for me? It's the lifting of the arch of your foot through the pelvic floor. So arch of the foot lifts, pelvic floor lifts. That's an exhale. And then as we do that, we add a little pull. Good. So it's complex, but not undoable. Keep focusing. Good, releve, lifting the arches, and a tiny little pull out. Yes, strengthening the tiny little rotator cuff muscles, so you're feeling a little bit of shoulder work, maybe not too much yet, that's okay. Good, and exhale, and inhale, and exhale, and inhale, good. So as we're doing these, we're gonna do about 20 more, and if you feel like you're overdoing your calves, Sometimes some of you are serious bikers, hikers, skiers, like you don't need a lot more calves. You can do a plie and up. So you can change it up a little bit. I don't want you to overuse calves. So I'm gonna do that myself. <laughs> Good. And then I was having some interesting thoughts this morning where I was noticing just my sort of evolution about health and Pilates in particular. And what I notice with um, people that are getting older, so a lot of my friends and clients in their 70s uh, and 80s and doing very well, but people who have a Pilates practice, they're stronger in a different way and they have a lot more agility. I was doing a hike with someone yesterday who doesn't practice Pilates at all 
and hikes and bikes and does other exercises, but not Pilates. And he's losing his balance. In fact, he fell during the walk. And I felt kind of terrible, but Pilates helps me in so many ways as I age. It keeps me strong from the inside out and it allows me to do all of these things in my life. It keeps me strong for life. So keep your elbows down and small little pulses out, like nothing else, like nothing else. But that doesn't mean that Pilates is the only thing to do. Although, hey, if that's all you're doing, kudos for that. But you do need walking, you do need some other activities for cardio health. Pilates doesn't give us so much cardio, but the other things, the interior strength. Good, now I'm in this plie, I'm holding it, and I'm pulsing out for 10 more, nine more, I'm hoping you're feeling your shoulders in a good way. Like, okay, I'm really feeling this as a shoulder activity now, Jen, yes. Five more, four more, three more, two more, last one, and we are done. Perfect. I do wanna get in a quick set for glutes. For me, I'm going to lean forward and lift one leg up, and we're gonna do small pulses. This comes from bar, it also comes from Pilates and ballet, but for thinking about like, in bar class, you would have a bar here in front of you and you'd be holding on to the bar. So if you have a chair, a wall, anything that you wanna hold on to, great. There's no problem with that. I'm personally just gonna pull my TheraBand out slide my leg back, and then lift my leg. Now, I don't want my leg lifted too high. It's not about lifting it high. It's about firing the glutes and the, um, the, the lower glute top of the hamstring. The hips are facing forward. And from this position, I'm gonna do tiny little pulses up. Up, uh, good. I'm not pointing my foot. I'm not flexing my foot. I am trying to zip up my belly. Good job, okay, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, keep going, little pulses, connecting leg to belly, and then there might be a little bit of balance if you're not holding on to something. If you are, I want you to settle your shoulder blades by lightly pushing down onto whatever it is that you're holding. So you get more back work that way. Good, let's do five more. Four more, three, two, one, bring it in. Yeah, good, jog it out. Woo. We will do some glute stretches later. Good, and then very last thing before we come to the mat. Other side, holding onto chair, wall, or nothing. Slide the other leg back. Lean forward and touch and lift up your leg. Can you keep your hips even? Can you keep your belly in? And then small leg lifts. You might kind of double check. Am I actually using top of my hamstring and that left glute or whatever leg you're on? Yeah, I am 25, 24, 23. Good, keep connecting your belly to your foot or belly to your butt. Keep making those connections, belly, butt, foot. It's all connected, it's like a geometric line. Good, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, last one. Good, bring it in, and we did it. Yay, okay, let's come down to the mat. That was fun. I feel kind of loose and limber. I hope you do too. Okay, beauties, we are on the mat. Oh, I'm gonna start with the TheraBand today. And what I want you to do here is use the TheraBand for a support system to do our rollbacks, but we're gonna use bent knees. Yeah. So my feet are a few inches apart, my knees are a few inches apart. The TheraBand 
is at the bottom of my feet, and I'm holding it close toward my ankle. I'm gonna take an inhale here, exhale, I give myself a little bit of TheraBand as I roll back, and my feet really wanna to come together. So I'm allowing my legs to squeeze together, yeah. And then my feet come off a bit to keep the TheraBand happy, and I roll all the way down. Good, so now you have a good connection with your band. It's gonna help you and provide resistance. Take an inhale here as you float your head to look at your thighs. Exhale a little bit of the TheraBand. Your feet could come off a tiny fraction, but the ideal world is your heels are very lightly pressing into your mat. So they don't actually rise up. But if you feel there's a little place where your feet want to come up a touch, yeah, just noticing that. Good. And this is all about rolling the spine down. Good. And rolling that spine back up. Now exaggerate the ends of the movement a tad. So when you come all the way down, you relax your head. And maybe you get a tiny little back bend. Then, as you come up, you lift through the crown of your head and you feel yourself lifting up and sitting, curling down. So there's a little tiny, tiny bit of arch and then a tiny, tiny, tiny bit at the end of the sitting up of a curl where you're lifting a little bit up as someone hooked you into your sternum like you're a fish being caught. Good, inhaling, good. So I haven't seen, we're gonna do about five, six, seven more of these. We really need to focus in on one bone at a time. This is the way we become and keep more limber through the small bones. Yeah, through the small muscles and bones. Oh, that feels great. So I didn't tell you about San Francisco because I didn't see you. But we had, Deb and I went to Wendy's place in San Francisco, and we went to, we had so much fun. We were there for two days and one night, and it felt like we got five days worth of activities in there. <laughs> we went to the symphony, which was fabulous. We saw this flautist perform a piece, I wish I knew her name. It was a piece by a composer, who I wish I knew her name who was either Italian or Argentinian, and it was so amazing. I've never, ever seen anyone play the flute like that, ever. It was, uh, it was a, a completely amazing, memorable concert. The Debussy, is that how you say Debussy? There was a um, Debussy piece, first and last. There were four pieces performed all together. They were good, very good. Very good, full orchestra, it's lovely. But the, um, the female composer who, who featured this flautist, oh, incredible. I'll have to get the names for you, but that was so much fun. Okay, now on this next one, we're gonna roll down, we're gonna bring our legs up. We roll down, we bring the legs in. Let the feet come a little bit apart, Hold on to your band by your uh, shins, and then pull the band in as you extend your legs. Good. And pull as you extend the legs. Good. Now the option here is you could think about using the small ball between your inner thighs. I'm not gonna use it today, but I'm gonna imagine that I'm using it. So I get a little bit more of the inner leg as I do these. Good. Now on this next one, I'm gonna add my head, neck, and shoulders lifting. So I'm just coming up to chest lift and down. Good. And I push and I lift. I think about having a ball between my thighs just to make me work a little harder in that one area. Ah, <sighs> good. And I'm trying to lift above my shoulder blades, but not to a full teaser lift. Nice. And lift. 
and lower. Okay, from here, I'm going to let my head roll side to side, shaking out any tension because I'm going to add some neck lifts in a second. So that should be very comfortable. The second part is a V shape of my feet. My knees are very wide. The TheraBand could be on the inside. I think I'm going to keep mine on the outside. So check for you what's comfortable. And then push out, resist in. Good. Pushing out, resisting in. Good. Give me a couple more of those. Perfect. Good. So going to the symphony was the first symphony I've been to in a, more than two years. Oh, it was so lovely. What a beautiful experience to have live music. In the symphony, and I think the San Francisco Symphony has not been back that long, maybe a month or two. But we were very lucky to get to go to the symphony. Yeah, we also went to the Legion of Honor to see an amazing show by a woman with the last name of Mutu, who is an artist who I feel the most uh, most prescient way to describe her work is that she's relevant. She's super relevant. <laughs> to me, she blends sci-fi, AI, climate change, angst, feminine, uh, African-American themes through all of her work. And it's eerie and beautiful. Check out her work. I'll show you some pictures. Good, now we're gonna lift up but one of the cool things I think is, have you ever been to a movie, an art show, an exhibit of some type, especially art, and you know nothing about it, you're not expecting anything, you've never heard of it, you've never, and you just respond from your gut, from your body, from whatever it is, a place that elicits a response. That's the way it was, so that for me, it was delightful, so delightful to find out about this amazing artist. And she's very well known. Um, she was commissioned, I think she was the first female black artist and artist of any type uh, to be invited to um, have her artwork shown on the outside of the Met in New York City. So very cool. Okay, I'm gonna do two more of these. <sighs> Nice, and one more, bending and straight. Excellent, okay. I'm taking my legs up, and I'm gonna take a moment here to do a tick-tock. That means the legs move side, through center, and to the other side. Yeah, it's comforting, but my hip bone lifts off, and then it lifts off the other way. Yeah, so side to side to side side. Right now I come to the center and my legs are together. I'm pulling my band down and I'm going to do small circles and I'm circling. I can feel against the mat my sacrum and the top of my lumbar spine. This is kind of a massage. If I'm allowing myself to um, get into the movement a little bit more, I can actually feel it's affecting my cervical spine in a good way. And then I do about six the other direction. I'm not trying to move my head, neck, or shoulders, but for me today, I feel a deep connection. So my cervical spine and my sacrum are like circling with my legs just naturally. It feels very holistic. Feels really good. Okay, perfect. From here, I'm just gonna use my TheraBand to help me lift up. So I'm gonna lower the legs, lift my head, roll myself all the way up, and I sit up very tall. You can see I've got my TheraBand crossed over and I'm holding below the knee joint. I want to work my upper back. This is just a little bit of rowing, so I'm gonna 
pull my elbows back, sitting up tall. I mean, to keep my spine and my legs super strong as my hands turn down and then my hands turn up. So it's palms down as they lengthen, palms up as they come to my side. It's inhale, exhale. Good work. Inhale, exhale. Nice. Inhale, exhale. Good. And I'm feeling the area between my shoulder blades squeeze together. So it's a muscular sensation. And I do one last one. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to do a, a tiny bit more chest lift. The TheraBand I'm going to use today because I pulled it out and I'm taking it in half. I'm going to bend my knees and as I come all the way back down, my TheraBand goes behind my head and I'm pulling it up as if I'm going to tie a kerchief onto my forehead. So from this position, I'm using the TheraBand to stretch my neck and to help me lift and to fire those triceps. So I'm holding on fairly tight and I want to lift up, lift up a little higher. My shoulder blades are completely off the ground and down. I just always kind of uh, offer that idea of having an apple or a persimmon underneath your chin. Some of you have a tendency like I did when I first started Pilates of really jamming my chest into my chin into my chest, but I want to keep a little bit of space there so that I'm stretching the front and back of my neck. Always, every exercise is helpful in Pilates. We're never muscling through something. We're thoughtfully moving through form and space and time. Woohoo! So it's lift a little higher to clear shoulder blades and down. Perfect. Now I'm going to lift up one leg at a time because I want to feel my pelvic basin heavy. I could imagine a giant rock or a brick on my pelvis. As I lift one leg up, keeping the brick down, I bring the other leg up. Notice that's very different than just lifting my legs up. Maybe you've trained yourself and it's not different. <laughs> okay, possible. But with, with awareness, the pelvis stays neutral. The rib cage tightens together a tiny bit as if we have a crochet needle and we've crocheted the ribs a little bit together. Just feel how that makes you a little tiny bit more connected. Then we're going to lift up and the elbows come to the knees and down. And we lift and lower. And this should be triceps, back of the body, and front of the body, and the elbows come to the knees or above the knees or toward the knees. So you're make your attempt in a circle and down. You're clearing shoulder blades for sure. Yes, you are. And it's lift and lower and lift and lower. Good. Now we're going to do one more set here. Hopefully your abdominals are really fiery. And we're going to see if we can add a little bit of leg movement. So here we go. It's lift, legs out, legs in, and down. Good. And this is a weird positioning because most of the time I would make you have the ball between your legs or I would ask you to keep your legs together. But today we're just working with the legs a little bit apart. So you have to add your own emphasis of inner and outer thighs. It's hard to, harder to do it on your own. I know, but just thinking, okay. Imagine that you're squeezing the ball and I wrapped a TheraBand around your legs. Legs are very active on the inside and outside as you go out and in. Good job, we have three more. Aha, uh -huh. ta-ta. Bring it in and down. We can do two more. Ta-ta. In and down. Super straight. Ta. Choo-choo. Bring it in and down. Yeah. Good. Melt down for a moment. Take a breath in and out. Ah. 
<sighs> okay. First, shake your head, then shake your feet. And then see if you can shake your whole body just a little bit like you have the wiggles. Like you are a three-year-old and it happens to be nap time. <sighs> Were you a wiggler or did you just go right to sleep? <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, so now we're wiggling and it feels good. We're gonna pull the legs in all the way into the chest and give them a squeeze. Good. Legs, tabletop or into the chest, dropping legs to one side as you look away, and then back through center for our supine twist, but we're not keeping the head looking at the ceiling. That's for true supine twist. This one's more of just a twist, but it is supine. Okay, we'll call it supine twist number two. <laughs> Adding the head looking away. Good, and you're gonna do that at your own pace. I'm gonna do a little bit of a livelier pace so that my legs go one way, the head goes the other way, and then I change. It's like I'm twisting, except for I'm lying down, I'm lying down and twisting. Good work. Okay, now when you come back to center, I want you to set your feet all the way down and find your ball. Yes, good. I'm gonna swivel around just to get a different viewpoint. It's turning out to be a beautiful sunny day here in this blue sky and big fluffy clouds. It's good, I guess, because we didn't get too much rain here at the coast, but some people got a lot of rain. So the fact that we have a day off of rain, ugh. Okay, your body is now on the ball, and I want you to take a moment to make that very comfortable. You'll notice that your pelvis is neutral, and we wanna start out with super basic. Super basic, what's super basic? And super basic is marching. So crochet the ribs, drop the belly, one leg up, we lower it down. Other leg up, we lower it down. Good, now to make the marching just a tiny bit more uh, thoughtful. Your belly's pulling in the whole time. You've got one arm up and the other arm up and that's a high V shape that we found in the beginning of class so that you can feel how your arms plug into your back. And it's just very easy marching one and the other. Good, now this time one leg stays up, the other leg stays up. Make sure always that you feel your ball is in the right position. Yeah, it has to be in the correct position. That really kind of means it's comfortable. Then we're gonna do the knees, knee backs. So basic part two. I'm keeping my arms in the V shape to make it more challenging as I lower and pull back. Pull back, good. Feet do not touch the ground, ta-ta, ta-ta. And the whole idea of this one is can I use the weight of my legs to challenge my core? As you know, we gotta keep thinking it, thinking it, because if you were doing this just with your legs, it would be a no-brainer. And we don't want to be in the no brain. I guess we kind of do want to be in the no brain. Okay, but we want to be <laughs> we want to be present. So we actually have to be thoughtful. Ugh, life is challenging <laughs> with words, right? <laughs> ta 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 ta. We could spend hours talking about the difference between brain and mind. Oh yes, we could. Okay, now. We got a light little workout. The legs are used here for challenging the core. I'm keeping my arms up today to make it more challenging. One leg out, one leg in for a single leg stretch. I'm keeping my feet fairly natural. There's a little bit of a point through the top of my foot, not much. And it's in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, cha-cha. Cha-cha, good, now I'm gonna lower my legs a little bit lower than they were. And that brings more core muscles into play. I can just feel, yeah, for me, this is definitely a good little challenge. 
And then for the last set, I'm going to see if I can go a little bit lower so that maybe I'm dipping down a little bit below the ball. I'm certainly not touching the floor. And it's challenging. I'm like, oh, yeah. I got, now I'm all the way up to the top of my rib cage. I can feel my whole torso working. Nice. Take a tiny little breather, and then feet and legs come up like a flamingo to the ceiling. And you want to have the kneecap spacing out, heels touching. It's a slight external rotation. It's not crazy ballet, though. It's Pilates V, so it's a little rotation. You got it. Squeeze the legs together, wrap twine around them, and then we're going to lower the legs. We're going to flex the feet. We're going to lift the legs back up. So I point the toes, wrap the sinew around the legs, so I'm squeezing them together. I lower the legs, I pause, and I flex the feet, reach out through the heels, and then bring it back up. Point, lower, flex, and lift. Point, lower, flex, and lift. Point, lower, flex, and lift, and point, lower, flex, and hold. It's in, heels toward my pubic bone, and press out. In, press it out, good. Now make the movement a little shallower, so you're not pulling the knees in as far as you can. It's just more like a plie. It's a little bend, press it out, so the accent is out. I'm squeezing my inner knees, but it's like a little tapping of the raven at night. Ta-ta, ta-ta, and you feel the ribs closing. The ribs are helping. Yes, good job. My legs are naturally pointing up. They're not down too much, because if I'm down too low on this one, I tend to overuse my psoas. So for me, it's a little bit higher, and then I'm where I want to be, which is right here in the vastus medialis inside of my legs and knees. Cha-cha. Good job. It's five more, four more, three more, two more. Last one. Let the legs come up. They turn to neutral. My, my uh, tailbone stays down on the ball, and I take it into the splits and then into a cycle. It's a big bicycle movement. Ta -ta. Good. For some people, the arms come down here and you can relax a little bit with your shoulders. For others, it's kind of good to have a little challenge level. You choose, but make it big and big and big. And we have 20 seconds of this big pedal, big pedal, big pedal, really. Push, push, push. Yes, you can. Push, push through, push through to the blue sky. Blue skies ahead. Woo! 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 Good. Know that good things are coming your way. Because the sun always rises. Right? In our lifetime, the sun has always risen. Good times are coming ahead. Good. Now reverse. 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 Good. Scoop and scoop and scoop. And scoop, keep going. Good, make it big and big and big. Good, you're using your belly here too, but it feels like it's kind of more of a nice stretch. Breathing. Perfect job. Okay, let your legs hang in space. Take one leg down to the ground. Find that both feet are gently flexed. Yeah. And maybe glance at your up leg and make sure it's not twisted. Okay? Now slowly, you're going to float your down leg up. And when it comes halfway up, that's when the other leg moves down. 
So what I'm asking for is I'm asking you to ground yourself and you change. Good. One leg is reaching up, the other one's down. If you have the ball like I do still underneath your sacrum, you're getting the stretch uh, high up in your thigh and it should feel really good. There's also a little bit of uh, hamstring and a little bit of psoas. So very helpful. Now we're gonna do this a couple of times so smoothly. You start with a low leg coming up, then the other leg moves down. That way you don't undo the nice stretching work that you just did. You feel like one leg pushes down, one leg reaches up. So there's that sensation of contrast. Ta-ta, good. And then again, lower leg lifts, it's halfway, the other leg lowers. Good, it's possible to have hands behind the thigh or holding somewhere. Find out what works for you, good. And then finally, these last few, we're gonna add pulsations. It's a very small little movement as if a tiny little creek is flowing through your legs, not a giant river, a little creek, a little drizzle. Kind of like the rain we got here yesterday. It's not a monsoon. Good, and then finally you change. Top, bottom leg comes up, top leg goes down. Find the contrast, and then if you like, you can do tiny pulsations, like a creek. Very small movement. Ah, perfect, good, okay. Shake out your legs meaning kick your butt. This is very helpful for your knees. Feel free to go slowly or quicker, but can you feel the ligament sliding a little bit? It's a good thing, kicking your butt, but really stretching your knees. Yeah, good, okay. Set your feet all the way down and lift up off of your ball. We've got just one set here of our uh, rolling bridges, and then we're gonna do our hip series. So for this one today, arms are at your sides, and we've been thinking about articulating the spine. That's the goal. It's not so much glutes today, it's spine. So you're gonna take a breath in. On the exhale, you tilt your pelvis, and then you peel your spine up. At the top, you press your thighs up, and you squeeze your ball, and then you lower down from the top all the way down, and at the very end, the tailbone comes down like little turkey feathers. Inhale, exhale, tilt your pelvis and peel yourself up. At the top, there's a little extra stretch, it's tiny. And then coming down, and I feel like I'm spreading a little bit through the spine. It feels heavy as it comes down. That's the way my mind feels like it's releasing. Good, and I do this two more times. Lifting up and lowering down. Good. Now on the last one, I'm going to stay lifted, and I want to make sure that I'm in my perfect bridge, which means that my shoulder blades or part of my shoulder blades are on the ground. That's where I'm, I'm using, I'm using those muscles to stay balanced. Good. And I want to work my back. So my arms are down at my sides, lightly pressing down. My feet are not wide. My heels are lined up to my sitting bones. I'm going to extend one leg. I'm gonna try my left leg. So here we go. I'm gonna lengthen that leg long. I've got tiny little pulses in just for six. Six, five, four, three, two, one. I set that foot down. I check just that everything is connecting. My butt is lifted. Other leg, so for me it's right leg, and I find that beautiful bridge, nothing's changed. Tiny pulses for six. I'm squeezing my ball and releasing my ball. Four, three, two, one. Set that back down, roll the spine down, legs into the body, give yourself a hug and a rock. 
a rock and roll. Perfect. Okay. We're going to do our clams today for our sideline hip series. So with the clams, you're allowed to get a pile of pillows right here under your head if you like. The body is in an L shape. Your neck and head are resting. They're comfortable. The feet come up. And then I want you to get your heels to connect. Hip bones are stacked. We close and we open. We close and we open. Good. Now, some of you might do this with your whole foot connected. Some of you might do it with your toes connected. And some of you, like me today, might do it with your heels connected. But recognizing there's three possible positions for our feet. Today, we're, we don't have time and we're not going to do all the three positions. Occasionally, we do and it's really fun. I am choosing the heel position today. For me, that's using the back of my body. Good. So it's squeeze and open and squeeze and open. Keep going with squeeze and open and squeeze and open and squeeze and open and squeeze and open. Good. So as we're doing this, we can do a couple more. I want you to know that my experience with the um, Hawaiian uh, outrigger canoe class where we're learning to paddle. After like an hour and a half of paddling out in the sea, guess where I feel it? In my butt. I had no idea that paddling comes from your butt. <sighs> Who knew? So we're gonna be doing some really good butt strengthening exercises the next couple of weeks so I can continue to do my rowing class or actually it's paddling, paddling they call it. Okay, good. Now, last three. I lengthen, bring it back, squeeze. I open, I lengthen, bring it back, squeeze. Last one, open, up, down, and squeeze. Okay, people, we're going to do our, our uh, hip releases at the very last of class today. So swing yourself around. I felt that set in my butt. I oh, really did. Oh, probably because we did other butt work today, too. L-shape, comfortable neck, feet up onto a little shelf here, and open. Hips are completely level. We squeeze and open, squeeze and open. Good job. Yes. Good. So I did finish a novel. I think I told you about it a couple of times because it is such a good one called Cloud Cuckoo Land, and it's by Anthony Doerr, who wrote the um, All the Light We Cannot See. And it's a big book, maybe 600 pages. So if you're not into reading big books, some people aren't. I love big books. The more, the better, because then they don't end if they're good big books. <laughs> but this one is so interesting because it takes place along so many timelines. There's a, and they all come together, but it's from Constantinople in the 1400s, and then it's in the wild future, uh, kind of AI, and they all come in, 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 in between. There's some that take place in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and then it all has a thread that weaves it together. It's a good one. It's a really good one. I've got it sitting here to take back to the library. And I liked it so much, I'm not sure I want to return it to the library. But I can't steal it, so I'll return it tomorrow. Now, last three. Extend, back, and squeeze. It's open. Extend, back, and squeeze. Last one. Whew. Back, and squeeze. We did it. Take a stretch for yourself on your back. Like you just work comes up and over, and you're in your number four stretch. Good. Breathing, finding a place for you where that is somehow stretching your hips and your glutes. When you get enough of that, take as much time as you want. You can change. Oh, that one. That side feels really good. <sighs> okay, beautiful people. I'm going to be visiting my daughter, my daughter who's pregnant. 
down in Southern California this weekend. And uh, I'm going to bring a big bag of mash of potatoes. I'm going to go to the farmer's market or to Blossoms and get uh, really good potatoes and some real butter and some Greek yogurt. And I'm going to make her mashed potatoes. Because when you were pregnant, didn't you want mashed potatoes? Yes. Isn't that a nice mom thing to do? Definitely. Okay, people, I'm going to unmute us. <laughs> if I